Welcome, I'm Polly Woldridge with John Stewart Walker, a realtor in the Lynchburg, Virginia area. In the next 30 minutes, you'll join me to see some houses that are currently on the market, and I'll share some tips from my book on all you need to know about real estate. It's for buyers, for sellers, investors, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the market is. It's a great time right now to get into the real estate market, whether you're buying or selling, because home sales are up 5%, and the pricing is up 6.5% over last year. So it's a great time to sell your house. At the same time, rates are low. If you're a buyer, now's the time before they go up again. So join me in watching these uh, houses that are on the market, getting some tips that might be helpful for you. And uh, if you'd like to, write me for my, a free copy of my book at pollywoldridge.com. Now check out these homes that are on the market now. Okay, sellers, this is for you. This week I listed a home on Tuesday and on Friday we had four offers and it sold for more than the asking price. So isn't that what you want for your house when you're ready to sell? I think so. So here's what you need to do. First of all, get a realtor. Did you know that 98% of homes sold in the US are sold by a realtor? So you have that 98% advantage the day you hire a realtor to represent you. What they're gonna do is give you tips on how to prepare your house to sell and pricing, which is number one important. So first of all, get your house ready before you ever put it on the market because you will get four times more traffic looking at your home the first week than the rest of the time it's on the market. So it's very important to be prepared. The first thing you wanna do, walk in with fresh eyes like you've never seen the house before. Your realtor can do this. And fix, first of all, anything that's not working, fix it. You're gonna to have to do it anyway because that buyer's gonna have a home inspection. So go ahead and do it now. The next thing is clean. Your house needs to be clean, maybe cleaner than it's ever been. And declutter, because less is best. Your house is going to look bigger and cleaner if you go ahead and pack up those knickknacks. Go ahead and um, you know get rid of some of the things in the closet that you don't use every day. You are moving, right? So pack up, stack those boxes in the garage or basement, It'll encourage the buyer to know that you are preparing to move and um, it'll make your house look better, more presentable. And you wanna get it sold quickly, right? The average time on the market is 90 days, but you can beat that time if your house looks pristine. Make it look as much like a model home as possible, which means take things off of the counters and the dressers, okay? Second, you have gotta look outside the house. That's their first impression. Most buyers do a drive-by, so you want it to look fresh. Keep that grass cut, 
landscaping clipped and get some flowers out front. I always tell people flowers are the smile on the face of your house and it just makes it look friendly like I want to live there. And then think about this. If, you're, if you could say nothing about your house, what would it say when someone walks in? Would it say, a dog lives here? Mm -hmm. Think about how your house smells, how it looks. Would it say, someone really loves and has taken care of this house? So you want to make that right impression because you, the first time that buyer walks in, that's it. They're going to judge your house, look for ways to save money, and discount the price that you've set for it. OK, let's talk about pricing. It's got to be right. Um, there's a triangle that needs to be balanced between your location, your price, and the condition of the house. You can't change your location. You can work on the condition. So price it accordingly. Listen to your realtor. They have access to homes that have already sold or are on the market that are like yours, and that's what an appraiser does. Your realtor will do something similar to an appraisal and price your house accurately. They should give you a range. You pick the bottom of the range, it should sell quicker, and if you pick the top of the range, it may take a little longer. So listen to them. They are your trusted advisor. They know what they're doing, they're trained to do this. And hopefully, you'll get a contract quickly. Your agent will also help you negotiate the terms of that contract because you can negotiate the price, of course, but your buyer is probably going to ask you to pay some closing costs. That can be negotiated as well. And then what about the time frame for closing? Maybe you can't close in 30 days and you need two months. That's another area of negotiation. And then the home inspection, they're going to ask you for something to be repaired. That home inspector is worth what you pay him, and he's going to tell you what uh, is new, what needs to be replaced soon. So those items can be negotiated as well. I'm telling you, your agent's going to represent you from beginning to the end. And then all you have to do after that is pack up, get ready to move, show up to closing to sign your paperwork. We'll be right there by your side, and then pick up your check, and move into your new home. So good luck on selling. If you need any other advice, please contact me at pollywoldridge.com. Would you go into a court of law without being represented by a lawyer? Probably not. So why would you go into a real estate transaction without being represented by a realtor? First of all, let me explain the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor, because there is a difference. We both can sell real estate, whether you're listing or buying. But a realtor is a member of the National Association of Realtors. So we are held to a code of ethics, a higher standard, 
And the number one article says that your interest is our first concern. So we are bound to that code of ethics and you're guaranteed that we're looking out for you. Now, if you're selling a home, 98% of homes sold are sold by a realtor. And on the flip side, uh, a for sale by owner, 80% of those contracts fall through. And there's a reason, it's complicated, there's a lot involved. So we take you through the entire process. And you might think, I can't afford a realtor, but homes that are sold by realtors sell for more money than homes that are not sold by realtors. As a buyer, you're, you're not gonna write a check to your realtor. That price, the commission, is uh, built into the price of the house. So buyer or seller, you're not writing a check for that, but you're getting represented. Uh, you're not gonna pay too much for that house because we're gonna guide you through that process. But on the flip side, you're gonna get more for your house because we're gonna price it accurately, get it sold quickly. So how do you choose a realtor? Choose one who is an, uh, a realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. Choose one that has designations. Uh, ABR, CRS, GRI, they all mean something. I don't have to explain to you except to tell you that means we have more education um, and more years of experience. And isn't that what you want when you're uh, representative is negotiating on your behalf when you're going through all those forms. You know, even writing the contract, every word makes a difference in what's included or not included, what the contingencies are to protect you. Um, and then when you're negotiating, uh, those are some skills that experience uh, hones, and you want an, a realtor who's a professional negotiator on your behalf. And then all the way to closing, We'll explain all the steps, make sure all the inspections and reports get done, and make sure that you close on time and get what you need to get. If you're a buyer, you want those keys at closing. And if you're a seller, you want to get that check, right? So pick a realtor with designations and experience. Interview a few before you choose one. Make sure you're comfortable with that person. Um, you may spend some time with them, and you certainly need to be able to trust them. So look for one who's a realtor rather than a real estate agent. You know, Google them. Find out what comes up when you Google their name. Um, nowadays, we have the advantage of online searches that tell us a whole lot. So I encourage you to get a realtor first, and then let's get going. Hello, I'm Polly Wooldridge and I'm selling a home in your neighborhood. Buying or selling a home is one of the most important things you'll ever do and I want to help make that experience as smooth and successful as possible. As a realtor with John Stewart Walker, I'm a full-time award-winning agent with over 15 years service to the Lynchburg area. I have a reputation of doing business with integrity and a passion to serve. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, contact PollyWooldridge.com.
I'd like to talk to buyers for just a few minutes because there's a process that you need to go to, but there's a particular place you need to start, and that is get a realtor. Because you can look online, it's a lot of fun, and you can even go to open houses on your own, but you're gonna want somebody on your side to represent you when it's time to make that offer. And besides that, they have access to the multiple listing service and can show you homes that maybe you couldn't find on your own. They can also show you for sale by owner homes. So interview a couple of realtors, but make sure you pick someone that you trust and don't mind spending time with. And I have a couple other tips for you. Pick someone who's got some experience. New agents are excited and they'll give you 110%. But when it comes to negotiating, I think you might want an agent with some experience. Look for additional education, uh, designations. It's those letters that come after our name. And they mean something, whether it's uh, accredited buyer representative, an ABR or CRS, a certified residential specialist. You know, those things mean that we have more experience and that we also took more classes, we have more education. So look for designations because they do mean something and it's important you know, down the road when you're negotiating, um, maybe uh, issues come up, sometimes that happens. I know that's a big surprise, right? But that's what we're here to help you with is any problems that come up. So get a realtor. Second, get a lender. Again, you can go online and check out rates and get pre-approved, but let me tell you, you will get 150 million emails if you do that, which is fine, but be prepared. You want a guy or girl that you can walk in and see them face to face. You wanna go in their office, talk to them, uh, there's a lot of uh, trust that needs to be established because you're giving them your whole life history um, and plus some. So get pre-approved. They can talk to you and check your credit score and tell you how much you can afford and about what that monthly payment's gonna be. So that's valuable information before you ever even go look at a house, right? You don't wanna look at something that's too expensive, fall in love, and then find out you can't afford it. So do that first, and then let's go shopping. I have some tips for you. Always look for three bedrooms or more, even if you don't need three bedrooms. Uh, it's good for resale. Look for more than one bathroom. Again, you might be buying your first house by yourself, but down the road, look for two full bathrooms if possible. And then the first thing is location because that really determines appreciation. How much more are you gonna get when you go to sell that house someday? You wanna make money off of it, right? Well, of course you do. So um, your realtor can help you with location and appreciation information about different areas. And then you really have to think about how do I live? What's important to me? Do I really need to be close to the elementary school where my kids are? Maybe it's really important to have a formal dining room because you have your grandma's set and you got to have space for that. You know, it might be a yard for your pets that's fenced. But think about those things, make your wish list and give that to your realtor. Um, the other thing is think about uh, resale and value and maybe even adding on, like an unfinished basement. If you finish that during the time that you own that house, your appreciation is gonna skyrocket. And that's the idea. Maybe a walk-up attic that could be finished. There's a lot of different things uh, that your realtor can show you in expensive ways to add square footage to your house and add value. And isn't that what we all want? To add value to the biggest purchase you're gonna make in your life, your home. So get a realtor you can trust get pre-approved, and then let's go shopping.
whether you are buying or selling a home, one of the things is that is going to come up in the contract is a home inspection, because every buyer should have a home inspection, and every seller should be prepared for that. So it's the number one contingency on the contract. It's usually done within two weeks after everyone has negotiated and signed and agreed on that contract. So I'm here with one of my favorite home inspectors, Chuck mm -hmm. Haggerty, with JF and Associates Home Inspections. And I thought Chuck could share his insight into uh, why do a home inspection and what he looks for and maybe some of the, maybe even an interesting what you found, I don't know, one day. So. Oh, I could take up the rest of the afternoon with those interesting <laughs> stories. But something you said earlier in your session was that uh, sometimes a seller will even have a home inspection. You were telling and encouraging the buyers or rather the sellers to go and have their house prepared and have it looking this way and doing that. And every now and then I'll work for a seller who just knows that there isn't a buyer coming off of every tree. And when one comes along, you don't want to lose them. So they'll have me come in, we'll look over the house, we'll evaluate it, try to find those problems, get them fixed before. And that's a big plus. But 98% of the time, 95% of the time, I'm probably working uh, for a buyer. You know, the buyer finds a house, you've taken them around, shown them everything you can see, they've picked a couple out, they narrow it down to one, and then that's the point where they usually go and call me and hire me in when the contract's already been signed and they put a contingency in, we like this house, we want this house, contingent based upon a home inspection. And that's whenever they hire me. And a lot of people then ask, uh, how old does a house have to be before you recommend inspecting it? And they think that the older houses are gonna be the more problematic ones. And sometimes that's the case. But I'll tell you, in over 20 years of doing this business and almost 7,000 houses, the two worst I've ever looked at yet, one was brand new and one was a year old. Wow. So you can get some big structural problems sometimes if you get a builder or a contractor in doing a house, he thinks he knows what he's doing and he doesn't. So these were some big problems I've seen. Now older houses have a whole different dimension, of course. They have the water damage, they have the time problems, sometimes they have termite or bug problems. So bottom line, you basically want to get them all inspected. You know, you just don't know. Brand new houses, they have to have code inspections, but those are sometimes pretty quick. And we come into a house, a home inspector comes in, he does a non-invasive, comprehensive evaluation of the house. It's top to bottom. He's looking at the roof. He's looking at the outside, the windows. He's up in the attic if he can get in there safely. Uh, each room throughout the house, you just take your time and work your way through it. You're down in the basement. Sometimes you find the big structural things down there. You're looking for the water problems that everybody's always concerned about, stuff like that. Uh, and then you're looking at all the systems, heating and cooling, electrical, plumbing, uh, it's a very thorough evaluation of the house. Now, it's a non-invasive evaluation. You can't go cutting holes and disassembling things, obviously, uh, but you do the best you can visually. And how should they pick their home inspector? Uh, primarily, when people call on the phone, they'll always say, first thing, hey, I need a home inspection. Uh, the house is this big, how much do you charge? Because we're all geared for that. You know, we all have to be concerned about our finances, of course. But when people ask primarily, the very first question, how much does it cost? That's a good question. But the better question is, how long have you been doing this? How many have you done? How much experience do you have? What's your background? What professional affiliations do you have? Ask about your inspector, because we're just getting to the point in Virginia, you know this, in July 1st, where they're going to require home inspectors to be licensed. But for the past 21 years that I've been doing this, you didn't have to be licensed. And we had people come and go, some of them more qualified than others. So find somebody who's uh, got the experience. And what I like about Chuck is he doesn't mind the buyer following him around. He's gonna educate you on what he's looking at and what he's doing. So do you, is that okay with you? Oh, that's, that's a good idea. Just yesterday even, uh, two houses I did. The one in the morning was a big house, a professional man buying it. He was a medical doctor. Uh, he had the time. He tagged along with me for almost three and a half hours on that house, asking questions. Now, he had experience in houses, so his set of questions were different than my next client, who was a young couple, first house, I always encourage them to come along because you're going to get some, uh, uh, some lessons, some, teach you some things you may not have known, uh, show you what I'm doing. You'll understand the whole process better. You'll understand your house a whole lot better if you, if you can tag along with me. And tell them how to get in touch with you, Chuck. 
jfainspections.com is the best way, jfainspections.com. We've got an auto scheduling feature on the website. You can get on it, you can click on the schedule link, you can see when I'm available, pick a time, give me some information, get a price and lock it in, jfainspections.com. Thank you, Chuck, I appreciate well, your valuable you. information. Thank you, Polly, always good to see you at Houses. So did you see a house you're interested in? If so, give me a call. And if you'd like to get a copy of my free book, just contact me at pollywoldridge.com and look out for the car around town. Post it on Where's Woldridge, wherever you see the car, and there's a drawing every week. I'd love to help you buy, sell, or invest. So give me a call and I'll see you soon.